now that we've completed all of the plumbing, all of the power, and all of the automation, we can go ahead and button up our steam room. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to go into a lot of detail about our friend, the Thermo Aqua Tuner. Now, Stephanie Risherup, and I'm probably mispronouncing that name, has been beating me up for a little while about increasing my tutorial account, specifically about the Thermo Aqua Tuner. So I figured it was high in time to go to the Nat Ear detail on what this device can do and how do we deploy it. Now, by definition, the Thermo Aqua Tuner's purpose is pretty simple. It cools liquid pipe through it, but outputs heat in the immediate vicinity. So what does that mean? Well, quite literally, it takes all the liquid on its intake and outputs it 14 degrees colder. Doesn't matter what kind of liquid you put in here, it outputs the same liquid, just 14 degrees lower. Now this process of cooling actually generates heat. And for our Thermo Aqua Tuner, it generates a lot of heat in the neighborhood of 585,000 DTUs. Fun fact, that actually stands for duplicant thermal unit. And if you highlight over what this actually means, it says, hey, 10 kilograms of water will passing through this device will output exactly 585,000 DTUs. Now you can go insane trying to figure out the math on what a DTU is and try to figure out the specific cooling capacity of everything. But let me save you the problems. It's a lot of heat. So much heat that we normally put thermo aqua tuners in a bath of steam and that way we can actually keep the thermo aqua tuner cool by using a steam turbine to absorb that steam essentially killing the heat but that doesn't mean that you have to put it under a steam turbine in a bath of steam in fact there's nothing wrong with you keeping it in the open air but eventually depending on how much liquid you send through this the thermo aqua tuner will overheat now if we build it out of steel the overheat temperature is 325 degrees and even better if you build it out of thermium, it's even higher. In fact, a thermo aqua tuner built out of thermium is often what is used to do some crazy stuff in Ani, like making liquid steel. And it all has to do with an amount of heat that it causes just by cooling these liquids by 14 degrees. For instance, let's pretend there's a liquid pump here and it's just pumping fluid across here and just dumping it into a pool here. It wouldn't take long at all for this thermo aqua tuner to just straight up break. And that's the reason we always end up putting some automation on the aqua tuner. Now, typically what you'll see people do is put a liquid pipe thermo sensor. What this liquid pipe thermo sensor would do would be reading the temperature of the liquid inside this pipe. And if it wasn't cold enough for what you wanted it for, it would tell the thermo aqua tuner to turn on. The thermo aqua tuner would cool the liquid and then spit it out the other side. But there's nothing to say you can't put a regular signal switch on it and turn it off every once in a while. Even better, a timer sensor that says, hey, I only want this Thermo Aqua Tuner to run five seconds every cycle. And that's one way you could do it to make sure that you're not overheating your Aqua Tuner. So why do we go through this process? Well, it's because we want the chill that the Thermo Aqua Tuner can provide. In this example, you can see we have a thermo aqua tuner inside of a steam bath that the steam turbine is taken care of. If this steam gets above 125 degrees, the steam turbine absorbs the steam, outputs cooler water in order to keep this room chilled. And you'll notice the thermo aqua tuner is sitting around 125 degrees. In this case, we're using the thermo aqua tuner to keep this water chill. And the reason why we're doing it is to transfer temperature with this water. Now, there's a million ways to do that exact same thing. In fact, we could have just had the thermo aqua tuner pipes going straight through this area. But we're always trying new things and seeing what works best and what use case. And in this example, we tried doing this. When this water gets cold enough, this door will open, creating a vacuum. So the chill in this block will no longer transfer to this block. This is just one example of a cool steam vent tamer, but there are plenty of others go around. In this example, we're running crude oil through the thermo aqua tuner to keep our steam turbines cool for our industrial area. The packets of crude oil go all the way around, absorbing all the heat created by the steam turbine until it makes it back here. In this case, the crude oil is still only coming in at 23. So the thermo aqua tuner has no reason to turn on. It is disabled by this liquid pipe thermo sensor. This thermo aqua tuner 
is actually responsible for creating this giant ice block. This giant ice block is kept cold by petroleum. The petroleum's at minus 19 degrees, and because of that, all the water that was in here has turned into a giant ice block. And we're using that ice block to keep this water cool that we're feeding crops with and to keep our deep freezer frozen. And while I know it does look like a bunch of spaghetti, all of this is happening by one thermo aqua tuner. And the reason why it's able to do that is because once the environment in here and the environment in this water is down to its equilibrium, the thermo aqua tuner actually doesn't have to work that much to maintain it. That's enough of rambling about the what and the why of a thermo aqua tuner. Now let's go build one ourselves. Here on my regular Let's Play, I'm actually building the system to cool resin. The purpose of it is irrelevant, but for your information, the liquid resin is gonna come down through here and drop off in this area right here. And the idea is we're gonna have this box cold enough to where the liquid resin will turn into a solid. But for the purposes of this tutorial, it does not matter because the thermo aqua tuner is doing the same thing it always does. And that's just to provide chill. So let's start by actually putting down the thermo aqua tuner and finding out its requirements. First, the thermo aqua tuner has to actually sit on a platform. In other words, you cannot build a thermo aqua tuner up here, otherwise it'll give you the invalid building location. So here we have it on a set of insulated tiles. And we want it on insulated tiles because of all the heat that is actually generating, we don't want it sharing with the outside environment. Now, once again, we are building it out of steel and that way we can ensure that it will not overheat unless of course our steam room gets above 325 degrees. Now the thermo aqua tuner does require 1200 watts. For that purpose, we have an independent conductive wire that we will tie in right there. Now this wire is not really important for the purposes of this tutorial, but it's coming off of a 2K power transformer off of my power spine. Now remember for the materials inside of your steam room, you want to make sure they're hard enough to withstand high temperatures. Lead conductive wire actually doesn't have a melting point until 327 degrees. I still don't play around though, and I'll use at least maybe some iron conductive wire. I probably wouldn't be so nilly willy with the iron, except on this map I happen to have an iron volcano. Now one important note, you'll notice that this room is five tiles wide. The specific reason that it is five tiles wide, and that's because we want to make sure that we can strap a steam turbine onto this room. So when we're all done and we end up putting tiles over here, the steam turbine will sit right on top. Now, while we're getting into the process of building this, I'm actually gonna start filling this area with water because remember, we need to make sure that the thermo aqua tuner is inside the liquid, which will then turn into steam. That way we can keep it from overheating. In order to make sure that there's no other environment into it, you want to make sure you fill the room up to the point where these tiles here are a liquid. Remember, you can use your materials overlay using F4 to see what is actually in those tiles. Sometimes you may not even know it because of the way the liquids stack, the water might not be so visible until of course you click your materials overlay. And you can see here, we have a layer of water and a layer of polluted water. Well, and a layer of brine and a layer of petroleum. And we're actually gonna do just that. We're gonna start with a small layer of polluted water, probably about 200 kilos worth in each tile. And I'll show you why in just one second. Now we have our layer of polluted water, we can actually put down a layer of water. Using this method actually saves us just a lot of time and a lot of liquid. You could fill up this entire area with 1000 kilograms of water each, and eventually it will turn into steam and the steam turbine will take care of it. But look what happens when we put water on top of the polluted water. Remember we talked about how the liquids stack? Well, in this case, polluted water is heavier than regular water, so it sits on the bottom. So any water that you put on the top just sits there. And now that we have these two tiles full, there's no oxygen or any other gas inside these tiles. So we will be able to close it up. Right now, we still have a little bit more work to do in there. So we'll get to the business of doing that. The first thing you want to set up is your piping. Now remember, when your pipes are inside this steam area, you want to use an insulated pipe because these pipes are going to be holding your coolant and you don't want them picking up any of the heat from inside the steam room. So check out your different materials and use the best material for the job. In this case, we're not actually going to be requiring a lot of chill. So we're just going to use some insulated granite. Now this is the part that normally trips everybody up. 
but I don't want you to think about it right now. We'll explain it once we have the whole thing finished. But I'm going to put a bridge right here. The purpose of the bridge is to make sure that the coolant keeps flowing. And I'll show you how it works once we get the whole loop finished. But remember, our coolant has to come in somewhere. And it has to go out somewhere. And that's what these two lines are doing. Now, in our case, we want to chill down these two tiles of water. So we're going to use radiant liquid pipes, aluminum because it's absolutely the best, in these two tiles. So because we're inside of insulation, we can use regular liquid pipes and we'll connect them up just like that. And because we're going to have a steam turbine up here, we're going to want to make sure that we keep it chilled too. So we're going to put some radiant liquid pipes where the steam turbine is going to be. Then we'll reconnect everything with insulated liquid pipes and then close the loop by the intake here. So here's our completed coolant loop. You can see the color differences, but where we used regular liquid pipe, where we used radiant liquid pipe, and where we used insulated. Anywhere we used insulated, it's because we we're worried about thermal conductivity. The coolant losing chill and gaining heat in an area that we didn't want it to. So technically, this piece right here, we could actually change out for regular liquid pipe. If you're really trying to conserve materials, that's how you'd want to do it. Now, remember from our earlier explanation, we need a way to be able to control how cold this coolant's going to be able to get, which will then in turn turn the aqua tuner on and off. And in this case, and quite frankly, most every case, you're going to use a liquid pipe thermosensor. We're going to build it out of steel because we have plenty of steel, and that way we're absolutely sure nothing will ever happen to it. And the same with the automation wires. We'll grab some steel here and connect it right into the input of the thermo aqua tuner. Now we're almost done with this entire thermo aqua tuner steam chamber, and we know there's something missing because we're absolutely pro level Ani players, and we absolutely never forget to put it in, but that's the liquid vent. The reason why you need a liquid vent is because we're gonna put a steam turbine down, and the steam turbine is gonna absorb the steam and output water at a one to one ratio. If we don't put this liquid vent back in here, Eventually, there'd be no more steam, and then the thermo aqua tuner would quickly overheat. So we make sure the liquid vent stays inside this room. While the duplicates are busy finishing that, I wanted to highlight why we end up using a layer of polluted water and water instead of just filling the whole thing up. Well, you can look inside these tiles, and they've been filling them for quite some time. You'll see there's a thousand kilograms of water in this tile, and 610 in this one. Now, this is important because we actually want another thousand kilos here because we eventually want these two tiles to form into ice but here we don't need that much liquid you can see here we only have 40 kilos of water on this layer and 240 of polluted water on this layer and again it's just so that when you close it all up it'll be nothing but water in here and no oxygen now that we've completed all of the plumbing all of the power and all of the automation, we can go ahead and button up our steam room. That'll just be a few more insulated tiles. We can also do the same here. You'll notice we have exactly 1,000 kilos in the top tile and a little bit over 1,000 kilos in the bottom tile. If for some reason you end up with more than just about that, you'll end up fracturing some of these tiles or these metal tiles here when this turns to ice. Notice that once it's closed, the entire top layer, even though it's only 40 kilos of water, fills that tile. Now we have two more steps to go. The first one is putting the steam turbine on top. Now, a lot of people end up building these out of steel or something really high end. But the fact is, you don't really need to. Regular copper will do just fine. Because if a steam turbine is running over 100 degrees anyways, it won't work. And we don't have to worry about it getting above 100 degrees anyways, because we have our radiant liquid pipes that's going to be sending our coolant that way. Now remember the steam turbine is actually a power generator. It can produce up to 850 watts depending on the temperature of the steam that it's inputting. Now in this sort of steam bath it's going to hover around 125 degrees so it's not going to produce 850 watts but the wattage that it does produce is still valuable. So we always try to connect it back to our power spine. Lucky for us we had a power spine tap nearby. The last thing we need to do is actually fill up our coolant line. Right now the pipes are empty. 
Thermo Aqua Tuner has nothing to chill. Now we could just tie in with some petroleum or some polluted water because it's nearby and it really wouldn't make a difference. We just wouldn't be able to chill the polluted water beyond minus 20. Anything below minus 20 and it'll crack the pipes because the polluted water will be turning into polluted ice. If we used petroleum, we could have the Thermo Aqua Tuner chill it as low as minus 57 degrees before it would end up turning into petroleum ice? I guess we just call that petroleum solid. And that's something important to note. Never have your aqua tuner chill down the liquid beyond its solidification point. If you're ever wondering what the solidification point of any sort of liquid is, just check out your database. For instance, if we wanted to find out the solid point of crude oil, we go to crude oil liquid right here, and we can see that it turns into a solid at minus 40. Notice in this case, we have the liquid pipe thermo sensor before the aqua tuner. If you're worried, about getting too close to that chill point, you want to make sure this thermo sensor is as accurate as possible. And the best way to do that is to make sure it's as close to the thermo aqua tuner as possible, right before the liquid gets into the thermo aqua tuner. And that way you know that the thermo aqua tuner is being activated for the liquid that's currently sitting in this pipe. It's not a big deal if you put it in another place, say in this location here, just know that when you have this activating, you're telling the thermo aqua tuner to cool whatever's in here by 14 degrees. And that could be something that's already been chilled once by 14 degrees. For instance, if water came in here at 28 degrees, it would get chilled down to 14 and then continue out the thermo aqua tuner. If that same water came all the way around and it was water that was 28 degrees again, and we're telling the thermo aqua tuner to turn on, well, it would take that 14 degree liquid and turn it to zero degree liquid, which zero degree water ends up turning into ice. I know that's a little convoluted, but the thing you need to remember is don't chill your liquids down too much. In our case, we're gonna use a liquid that you can't chill down too much. That's right, we're gonna use super coolant. Because we're sort of late game on this map, I have a ton of super coolant and quite frankly, I just love using it. It has the best thermal properties that you just don't have to worry about. Now we always try to bridge on our liquids to our coolant loop and that way we can make sure that we don't overfill the loop. Now this is because we have the bridge in here. If the thermo aqua tuner is not running, the liquid bypasses the thermo aqua tuner just like your regular pipe mechanics tell you. For instance, in this example, we have a liquid pump. Well, we know the way liquid works. It goes from the output into the intake. Well, the intake for the bridge pushes all the liquid over to here. Well, if this line was full, the liquid would just bypass the bridge and keep going. You didn't have a bypass. The liquid would just stop. And that is what we're trying to prevent with the thermo aqua tuner. Our coolant is going to come in through here and it's going to get to the thermo aqua tuner. If the thermo sensor is turned off the aqua tuner, the coolant will bypass the thermo aqua tuner, jump over here and continue on in the loop. We do that because we want the liquid to continuously drop off chill. And in this case, we're dropping it off here with these radiant liquid pipes and here with these radiant liquid pipes. If we didn't have the bridge here, if the thermo sensor noticed that the coolant was already full, it would turn off the aqua tuner and the coolant would just stop. In fact, it would stop until the coolant in this pipe right here was warm enough and then it would send it on. It would just be a very, very inefficient coolant line. And I'll be able to show you more examples of that once we get this filled up here. Now, when you're filling your coolant line, you can do it a couple of ways. One, you can count all the liquid pipes in your coolant system. And remember that each liquid pipe holds 10 kilos of liquid and then pump in exactly that amount by using the bottle emptier. Another popular way is using the liquid meter valve. The liquid meter valve, you can tell it exactly how much liquid you want to pass through it and then it'll turn off. Our super coolant just got dropped off and you can see the bridge is putting it on and then it's following the flow that the coolant line will have. Now in this case, the thermo aqua tuner is actually turned on and is cooling the super coolant. But when you're filling, it's actually beneficial for it not to be on. So we're gonna click below just in case. That way we're filling up the loop as if the thermo aqua tuner is off. 
And the reason why we do this is you'll notice there's actually more pipes when the thermo aqua tuner is on than when it is off. So you actually need a little bit less liquid if you want it to still continue to flow. Otherwise, what'll happen is this will get backed up and the bridge won't be able to send the next blob out. The last of our super coolant just got dropped off, so the liquid pump is going to try to fill in all these little gaps. You want to make sure that you have as few air gaps as possible, and that way your coolant can carry around more thermal mass. If you had little blank spots here or there, well, you wouldn't have much thermal capacity there. Now that this is full though, we can deconstruct the liquid pipe and we won't have to worry about any sort of blobs sitting around. With that complete, we're ready to get to the business of chilling. You can't actually freeze supercoolant. If you go to its database entry, it says it turns into a solid at minus 271.2. All I'm going to say is good luck getting to that temperature. You'll get close and you'll even hit minus 271.2, but the mechanics of the game just don't allow it to freeze below that, naturally using a thermo aqua tuner. We can go back to our thermo sensor, and we get to decide how cold we want this ice block. Remember, the amount that we set here, all of that chill is eventually gonna be dumped into this block here. So if we say, turn the thermo aqua tuner on whenever the temperature is above 15 degrees, it'll keep going until this coolant is 15 degrees. We actually want this to turn into ice, so we're gonna say minus 50, just to flex our super coolant a little bit. Now remember, the thermo sensor doesn't actually care what these two tiles temperature is. It's only checking for the temperature of the coolant. So by making the coolant minus 50 and dumping all that chill in here and in here, eventually the coolant will have no more chill to dump into this area because the block of ice will already be at minus 50. So the coolant will come by here, try to drop off chill, and it won't be able to, so the coolant will remain at minus 50 degrees. Now, it'll still be able to drop off some chill here, but super coolant is very, very efficient. So this thermo aqua tuner is not actually going to have to run that often once we get the temperature set where we want. Now, you can see our thermo aqua tuner is raising in temperature. In fact, even on normal speeds, you can see it went from 56 to 57, and now it's starting to hit 58. It's going to keep going until it turns all this water into steam. Once it does, the steam heats up to 125 degrees and the steam turbine will then kick on to cool this whole room down. Now really outside the scope of the tutorial, because this is all you really care about is this chill right here. Wherever you send this radiant liquid pipe, that's what it's going to chill. For our purposes, we have it connected to a metal tile. So that way the ice will transfer chill with the metal tile and when this door is shut, it'll transfer it with these metal tiles which will transfer it to this room all with the aim of chilling this resin down below 20 degrees. Once it hits 20 degrees, it'll turn into resin solid, and then we'll have our conveyor loaders pick it up. I normally like to wait until this area is set before you engage it with what you're actually trying to cool down, whether it's materials, whether it's a liquid or a gas. So we'll wait a little bit until this is ice. And as you can see, this super coolant is already at minus 25 degrees and the water temperature is dropping rather quickly. To highlight another example, we have this thermo aqua tuner here. It's the same exact system. It's using super coolant, it's keeping the steam turbine cold, and it keeps dumping off chill inside of this little block here. That block is responsible for keeping our sleet wheat farm nice and chilly. You can see the inside of our sleet wheat farm is at minus two and a half degrees. Now what we could have done is just connect the entire coolant line for the sleet wheat farm directly in to the thermo aqua tuner. The reason why we didn't in this case was because this is an offshoot from something we were doing earlier. We were using polluted water inside of our coolant lines and it would have been impossible to keep the entire sleet wheat farm regulated with just one thermo aqua tuner. Because remember, the aqua tuner can't cool coolant by 7 degrees or 3 degrees. It goes 14 degrees, and that's it. From 0 to minus 14 to minus 14 to minus 28, there's no, like, I only want to cool it by 5 degrees. Now, eventually, all the coolants will equalize. Because it'll go around in a circle enough to where you'll hit your target temperature. But getting there in a system that is very finicky, like a sleetweed farm because you have regular water coming in that you don't want to freeze, but the area above it actually needs to be cold enough. So there's a lot of different ways to 
actually utilize your chill. The way I like to measure your efficiency so that you can practice and see what's the best is click on your thermal aqua tuner and then go over to properties. You can see the uptime for the thermal aqua tuner. In this example, this thermal aqua tuner is running around 70% of the time. And the reason why is pretty simple. It's because we have crude oils being still used as a coolant. If we used super coolant, this thermal aqua tuner wouldn't have to run maybe 20% of the time. But if you want to compare two identical setups, for instance, whether or not you had your coolant lines connected directly into your thermal aqua tuner, or you were using this sort of buffer tank here, the best way is to set it up twice and then to see which one your thermal aqua tuner is running less. Because remember, your thermal aqua tuners are expensive. They take 1200 watts. So the less they run, the better. Now I don't even think it's been a full cycle and you can see our steam room is already hot enough that it's turning all this polluted water right into steam. Now when you use the polluted water you get the annoyance of some dirt here and there, but it's a small price to pay to make sure that you don't have to use as much liquid. Likewise our ice here is already at minus 11, which is going to be plenty enough chill to dump over into here. You can see this resin is already turned into hard resin because of how chilly it is. And it's getting just that chill because of the temperature shift plates. But what we can say is when this room is below 10 degrees and look at transfer that cool so quickly. Now these metal tiles are down to zero, which is dropping the temperature on these temperature shift plates, which means this temperature shift plate is getting that same chill. So whenever resin drops in here, it's going to insta cool. And now that the room, or more accurately, this thermosensor is below 10 degrees, it opens this door and stops transferring chill. Which, for our purposes, mean we can now transport the resin out of here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Thermo Aqua Tuner. I'm absolutely sure I missed something, so please feel free to ask some additional questions in the comments below. Our community is very helpful, so I'm sure we can help you out on whatever your use case is. Now, I know this specific example was a bit ridiculous, but... It at least highlights some of the stuff that you can do with your thermal aqua tuner and steam turbine setup. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. And I'll talk to you soon.